fit into anymore. I think I'm going to do this. Um, to start off with, these windows here are light. Now I'm going to put some white on. Now I'm only going to do one because I want to see how it looks compared with the rest of the colour. Now I've got to put a colour on there. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a light grey. Where's my light grey, Colin? Here we are, a light grey. I'm going to put a light grey here. And I can do the whole thing for you. But if I just start the ball rolling, it will go to about here. Now this is where the shadow takes over. We'll go in there like that. And where the shadow takes over, I'm going to use the other grey, which is the medium grey. And that will go on everywhere else. Now, you will say to me straight away, that hasn't got any base colour on it, Colin. No, you're quite right, it doesn't. But, you see, what we'll be doing here is we want texture. And this will give it to us. Now let me just finish this off and then I can complete it. Now I don't want to press too hard here because I'm going to put lots of colour on it. But this source, this colour can also go into the grey. And I, so I'm going to have a, an edge. Now the reason I put the light grey on is because I wanted it to have a good start. In other words, light grey here, darker grey over here. Now it's make a bit more sense when I blend that in a tick. Now I want to try to get as much coverage on the paper as I can, so what I'm going is going in between these. There you go, I've done it. Here are the lines of the paper. I'm going to use some grey colour shaper and find it. You could use the pointed one here as well, but I think the grey might be the better choice. And you see, what will happen is, you can see how I'm pushing it in to the paper. I'm using the corner or the edge. Now when you get to here, it will then mix with the light grey which I've got on, giving us the beginning of the shadow that's coming in. And we'll be adding loads and loads of colours to that. But you need to put the white in first. Got it? Another consideration here, you see that edge there, that round? Well, this, as we're looking up at this windmill, I'm going to have to continue that all the way along. But if you look at that, the angle of that, then you look at the angle of that, that's almost straight, isn't it? Not quite straight. So when I get down to here, I'll be able to use the tooth of the paper, which is running across here. Uh, but I can't use it here. I've got to, I've got to create the brickwork in such a way that it represents this angle. Otherwise, folks, it's going to look odd. But I think you'll agree that that already begins to look great, doesn't it? Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that all the way down to the bottom there. I've right, got down to there. Now, what do we do now? Well, I've decided to put the uh, railings in white. So we've got to do this in a very special way. Let me just turn this on its side. You'll have it almost face on. But let me show you how I'm going to do this. It's going to be really interesting, this. I think you'll find fascinating. Now, start off one in the middle there. In there. Now these posts are thicker, these posts are thinner. One in the middle there, and there, and one there. Now I'm going to go all the way along there. A little problem here though, let me show you how we get over that one. 
I'm going to make that just a little darker in there. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll make an ivory. Make it ivory in there. This is gray. This is white, but we'll have an ivory door. And maybe just a little spot of grey in there. Dark grey. You'll see the sense of this when I show you the next bit. A little touch of touch of blender. We can redo that anyway. Now that allows me then to put the white post in. You see, there's one one there, one there, so we got one in the middle. One down there, one down there. Let's see, I've got that too far over, folks. Let's, let's do that again. Make a better job of it this time, Cole. In fact, I think I better take that out as well. Yep. So again, the post would have been here. Now you can just about see that white post. Got it? And that white rail goes along the top. So here we go, we've got that one there, the one in the middle, one there, one there, one in the middle, one there, one there, one in the middle. Now, as we go along here, it gets smaller, all right, like that, and I shall have the same. Now let me finish all of these off. What we're going to do then, it's very clever, we're going to then go in between with the grey. So uh, I'll do a little bit of this to show you how that's going to work. Got it. Now doesn't that look good? Well, when I finish it, it's going to look really good. That door though, now I think what I might do there is change the colour of that door altogether. Let's think about it for a minute. Let's put in this colour, 187. It doesn't have to be a white door, does it? It makes it easy for us if it isn't. Now we've got the same thing here. And we've got that white there, so that's going to be that, like that, like that. You've got the idea of that. That makes it just a little bit easier. And on the other side. Now this was great. I'm going to put the darker grey in here. And the reason is I can't do this too many times. So although it doesn't match what's going on here, it will do eventually because I shall just use a couple of colours here. Now the problem here, I can't do that because I don't know what I'm going to be putting over the other side of that yet. It's the same over here. I've got when I come down here with it. Uh, I've got well, I've got to, you see I've got green, but the problem with it is. That goes all the way around the building. Are you with me? So although I could put the green in, it wouldn't be representative. So I'm going to have to work that out later. That's I'm going to have to work that out later. But this is fairly easy. So let me continue with this. I hope all this is making sense to you. It will do when I finish it. Now we come to one of the best bits of the picture. Let me show you how this was done. I'm using 283 and I'm using it in a very special way. Watch this folks. Now I'm going to show you a, a line of this and then I'm going to carry on because it's a long job and then you can watch me in little bits as I go through the picture, particularly when I get down to a window. And what you're doing is you're imagining you're putting brickwork in here. Now you can see from above that it doesn't look anything like that at the moment. Now here it goes on quite strong. It's not until you get to here that you lighten it off. Now remember we've got light grey underneath it there so it's automatically going to be slightly lighter but with and we, we've got to think that we're coming like this. Got it? No, no that's hard. But the more you do, the better you'll be at it. And we've got a lot of brickwork in this picture. That's good practice. Now when we get to here, we're starting to think, ah, do we need a bit lighter? You see above, it's a little lighter. Now what we do, we've got the grey coming through, so we can use the grey we put underneath that to lighten. 
So what you do is you it, it make the, the pressure on the pencil just a little lighter. I would do it across like I'm just I'm showing you because you can see there's a slight bend in that, not much. But there you are, you see. Now, having done that, we then go back in with another colour, which is that one, gosh, uh, is uh, 181. 181 can come down here, just giving us the edge like that. And then we can come across with this. This is a bluey grey, so we've got a really nice combination of colour there. Pastel pencils are marvellous at this. They are a master at texture. This can look so real at the end of the day. And when you come to here, line it off again. Because this is where we've got the lighter area. And if it wasn't light enough, there's several things we can do. One of them is to make this a little darker, which I'm going to do in the tick. Now that's nice and light on that. We need to be a fairly con strong against the sky at the back. Now how good is that? Now just before I move on, I'm going, if you've got this, do it, use it. If you haven't, use one of the others. And what you want to do is just spot it in a little bit. Don't rub it. Use it as though you were using a pencil and, and that gives you, just pushes it into the paper a little bit more. And you get that fantastic effect. Like that. Good. Now, just one other addition. I've also used 192. Just to put a little bit of red in. You don't want too much of this. Just a little touch of it in. And I've also used um, this one, which is the 168, which is green. Just a little spot of weathering. Like that. And the final colour here is the black. Now I've used the black here underneath there to darken it, but you do need to put just a smidgen down the edge of that because it gives you just that little bit more depth on that side. And this is when I said you can make it darker, that's where you can do it. You can bring in the black in just to darken it off so you get a lovely sweep round there of dark to light. Now you can see how long that's taken me to do. I'll stop when I get to a window and show you that and explain it to you, but otherwise it will be without narration. And obviously when I get down to here, I will show you how we go and make that. It's going to look stunning when we finished it.
I brought you back in now because we're on the finishing stages of this first half. And you can see that I've gone right along that edge, giving us a nice crisp white rail. And just really just putting the finishing touches to this edge. Notice you'll see the hair, the contrast between the tree and the building is tree dark, building light. Tree light, building dark. It gives you a, a really nice effect that way. So that's more or less it. I just want to make a little, little more, more strength over this side with the 181. Remember, it's only had, apart from the greys that were put on, it's only had the 283 in there. And let me blend it. Actually, this is the key thing here. We're pushing colour into the paper. And you see, as I go along, the sparkle disappears. Never be tempted to blend this with your blender because it will spoil if you do. Do it the way I'm showing you. It takes longer, but more effective that way. Okay, that's good. Now we'll add our other colours in, like our 192. I've also added a touch of ochre as well, which you haven't seen yet because I added it afterwards. And let's see, 182. Not a really an appreciable difference between that. It's when you get this lighter, which is 184, that you get a slightly change in tone. And I can come over here. And then the final colour that I put on there was the red. 118. And that gives me the red bricks. Again, only in places. A little bit of black. Now the black can come in here because I want that to be a little stronger. Okay. And on this edge and into really up to the first quarter of the picture you can put some of the black in that adds more weight to that side of it but over here now you see the top is lighter than the bottom well this is what I did folks I got my putty rubber fashioned it so I had a nice little point on it and then just went over and relieved some of the pastel I just put on and that gives it a really sparkly effect you can see the difference between here and here now great lovely there's my first half 